Welcome back to the Limer Post Show with me, Megan Scully, and I'm delighted now to be joined by Mr. Greg O'Shea. Now, I've been, I wanted to like look through everything. I was saying international rugby player, athlete, <laughs> lawyer, TV and radio presenter, Love Island winner, Pilates instructor. Is there anything else I'm missing out? Jeez, it's that kind of saying that's like uh, jack of all tr trades with master of none. Uh, do you know what, though? I'm kind of the same as you. I do loads of different things, but I feel like it's important because it kind of keeps the brain kind of busy and I think especially at times like this cocooning you kind of need all those different things to break up the day yeah exactly I, I didn't really ever use my Pilates qualification but now that we're all cocooning as you said I was like geez I might as well throw a few videos out there so it's trying a bit of everything and see what fits I know I have to say I have been doing them and I do love them quite tough now I have to say you all throw in a few tough ones there towards the end and I'm like oh god <laughs> I'll have to make them a bit easier I got a few uh complaints well not complaints but people saying they're very tough so I might have to ease them off a little bit they start off kind of lovely and like nice stretch and then suddenly it gets into something. I'm just like, okay, yeah, I can't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining it though. I appreciate it. No, no, it's really good. Now, come here. Um, we've seen that, you know, this probably isn't exactly your first time in a kind of a lockdown scenario. You did it last summer. But how does yeah. it compare now being in a lockdown or a cocooning uh, in Limerick? Yeah, I know. It's actually very similar to being in Love Island. I was saying it a couple of days ago to one of my mates. Like, the only thing I'm missing is 24-hour cameras and about 10 British people I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and a few palm trees. And Although we have the weather now, so I suppose the weather's kind of on par. We do. It's gorgeous weather, actually, at the moment. It makes it tough to stay inside. It absolutely does. Um, now, Greg, the last time we spoke to you on the Limerick Post Show was last summer when you were in Shannon Airport. You were flying home from Love Island. I was flying out to Ibiza. We managed to be there at the same time. I caught you for a quick interview. Um, but, like, I also, like, read now, since the whole experience, you are the most followed rugby player in the world. Like, that must be pretty cool to think that, you know, you're, yeah. you're there above everyone else now in, in terms of uh, Instagram followers. Yeah, it's crazy, but, like, I'm not followed for my rugby abilities. Like, I'm followed for people <laughs> in Love Island. And... The, it's it's nuts the like the drop off of following from me coming out of Love Island till now is crazy like it's the same for everyone people just yeah. forget about it like you know, they just get over it so um, I'm lucky I kind of came home and, and stuck to my roots and stayed with my friends and my family because it's only very quick kind of instant overnight fame and there's there's uh, you need, just need to be careful that you don't get caught up in it you know Absolutely. I suppose the most important thing for you is the Ireland Sevens. And, you know, that's why you decided to stay, to commit to staying in Ireland and to training. And, of course, the plan was for to go for the Olympics, which has now been postponed to 2021. And I see as well that you have a GPS tracker. So there is no getting away from keeping fit at home. <laughs> How are you finding being away from the squad and working out at home now and having to be so disciplined? Yeah, it is tough being away from the boys, like, obviously we can get our running done and we've all got our weights and stuff so we're getting the general individual training done but we're not doing any work as a team yeah. um, which is tough so like we're kind of falling down in that sense but the, every team in the world is in the same boat like so um, it's just kind of getting through this period of time and staying fit and staying healthy so when we can get back we can get straight back into training and try to get to Tokyo yeah, it must be some like it must be it's like so incredible to be working towards the Olympics, and obviously this has happened now. But do you feel like this could maybe benefit you as a team because you've an extra year now to prepare? Yeah, well, hopefully. Initially, we were kind of a bit down about it because we were so like pumped and mentally ready to try and get there. We'd one tournament to win in June, and if we got there, we're in the Olympics, and now it's a, yeah, a year out. But like, it's another year to improve the team. We're just on the series, so we're still just babies on the series trying to figure it all out. So it gives us another year to get bigger and better, and hopefully now it will, it will stand to us. And I have to say, I love seeing that the support for the Sevens is just growing and growing all the time. I remember going to the Sevens tournament in Twickenham back in 20... <laughs> gosh how many years ago now was it a couple of years ago there and it's just so much fun like it's energy it's fast it's just electric and I think it's great to see so many more and more people are getting on board and supporting you guys and getting behind you yeah it's great to see like obviously a lot of people don't know what sevens is mm -hmm. and a big goal of mine was from getting all this like attention was that I want people to know what sevens is and know that it's a great sport and we're, we're separate to the 15s, lads, but we, we fight our own corner and we're on the World Series. And it's a great entertainment. As you said, anyone that's been to an Olympic or uh, to a sevens weekend, it's just so much crack. So if you haven't been before, you need to get there. Oh, I'd highly recommend it, I'll tell you. It's, and an excuse to get to travel around the world. Now, obviously, yeah. you're saying you've got the home gym there, which we have seen on your YouTube. And I think um, I've noticed, obviously, you're putting out more and more YouTube videos. How are you finding the whole content creation at home? Obviously, it's another thing to do to keep busy. Yeah, I'm finding it hard. Content creation doesn't come to me easy. Like, I find it very difficult. And I, I had a mate, Harry McNulty, who's done a lot of work for me, but I decided that he has his own stuff and I need to kind of be able to do it myself. Yeah. And now is with more time than ever to be learning stuff. So I've sat down, looked at tutorials and figured out how to do it. 
and it's very amateur what I'm doing, but it's getting there and I'm learning and I'm enjoying it. No, it is. It's incredible to see. And I know I'm, I'm doing it myself here. It's just to kind of fill a few hours in the day by making my own videos. And I suppose in a way you're putting yourself out there and you're putting your yeah. own face and your own, like, as you said, your own editing, you're all on your own, but it is, it's kind of like, it's a nice way to, to learn. And I suppose it's another way for you to kind of interact with, with so many of your different followers, be it um, the rugby, be it from any sort of realm. I think that's why it's good for you. You have the Pilates, you have the rugby, you have the gym stuff. So I think you kind of something to offer quite a wide spectrum of, of people. Well, I'm delighted now that, the Pilates is actually, and the core sessions I've done are getting people moving and people are actually getting up off the couches and trying the sessions. And that's mm -hmm. actually the most positive side of it is that people are actually trying it and not just kind of sitting at home and like sulking and grumpy. They're actually getting up and moving. So I'm delighted I can help out a bit. It is great to see so many people getting up and getting active, but I suppose for maybe the younger athletes out there who aspire to be an athlete, who aspire to be an international rugby player like yourself, what advice would you have for the young guys and girls who are now maybe stuck in, at home and are cocooning and can't, as you say, get out and play with their mates? Yeah, well, if you're trying to become a sports person and that's your goal and that's your desire, like nothing should really get in the way of that. So you have to, what I'd say, the best thing to do is stick to a routine and make sure you're getting up at the same time, going to bed at the same time, eating well, you're getting in your training. And obviously you can't train with the team, but you can do stuff yourself. And it's just about keeping yourself in the best shape possible for when you get back to your team, then you're ready to go and you're not falling back to, from where you were. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing I've noticed is you're quite active on Twitter, which is, uh, is good to see. And I see now uh, you've maybe set yourself a new goal um, of uh, Gogglebox. You have to care about <laughs> <me>, Greg. <laughs> oh, Gogglebox is the best show on TV at the moment. It is so much fun. The Irish one now I'm talking about. I yeah. just think some of the comments coming out of people and that, like the Ryan's family in Limerick out of Lee, have me in stitches laugh. <laughs> Two twins from Cavan, I think they are. Yeah. Oh, I would love to be on Gogglebox. I, I think it's so funny. Well, look, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah, watch the space. Now, um, just one another thing I want to touch on is obviously now that you've kind of, you've dipped your toes in the TV and radio presenting in the media world, and obviously having the, the law behind you, you probably have studied media law, so you've kind of got a good idea and a good grasp of it all. How, you, how do you find the presenting role? It's tough. It's tough, yeah. So you'd be well able to know all that kind of stuff, but I'm still figuring it out. And I really enjoyed the radio um, with 2FM, and then I had the Virgin Media gig, obviously. And I, it's basically just thrown me straight into the deep end. I didn't know what I was doing, but I've enjoyed it. Went in with a good attitude, brought some energy. And it seemed to have gone well, and I've nothing lined up now for the future, but I'd definitely be open and interested to do some more. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's a good buzz, I have to say. Like the radio and TV, they're so different because like they, even though they're both media and they're both broadcast, they're still two completely different things. Crazy different, yeah. And the, the TV with the auto cue and <laughs> trying to make like you're, you're relaxed, but you're not relaxed because you're freaking out. But like, it's great. And um, I never thought in a million years I'd end up doing something like TV and radio. And now it's another avenue that I could go down. So we'll see, loads of options. I'm very lucky. It's absolutely incredible. Greg, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you again. And hopefully the next time we chat, it'll be in person in the studio. <laughs> yes, thanks, Megan. Yeah, thanks for calling me. Hope you're doing all right over there. I'm very good now, the other side of the city. Come here, one final thing. What is your YouTube channel so uh, we can get it out there? Uh, so it's just Greg O'Shea. That's it. Simple enough. Yeah, look me up and try some of my Pilates classes and see how you get on. I will, absolutely. Of course, you're on Instagram and Twitter as well. As I said, Greg, absolute pleasure. Can't wait for the next Pilates video. Stay safe, stay at home, and we'll see yeah. you soon. Thanks, Megan.